And um, to illustrate superposition principle, I need to change a few things. Uh, one, I don't need a timer. And um, so to illustrate superposition principle, I need two waves or two things that I can at least uh, describe as two separate waves. And I really have only one source of wave. So what I really need is something that this wave can bounce from. So, so this no end thing won't work really work. What I really need here is uh, I need a fixed end or loose end is actually more interesting. So let me use that. Okay, so we did a setup. I can illustrate superposition principle. So I can, uh, let me do slow motion so I have more time to talk. <laughs> I can generate a wave. Um, you know, that's quite broad actually. Let me uh, make the pulse width the smaller. Let's see. Okay, that's better. Yeah, oops, did it too quickly. Okay, so I can generate a wave. And around the time when this is reaching the right end, I can generate another wave. Now I have two waves or two pulses on this single string. And uh, with no damping, these uh, pulses will bounce back and forth forever. And um, the way the boundary conditions work out, how, how they bounce from these two ends are distinct. And that um, gives you interesting things to look at. So you saw how this pulse, as it was bouncing from the right end, just bounced back the same. It's the same shape. And let me just let it run for a little bit. Uh, here's where they overlap. Let me ignore that for now. And when they bounce from the left end, the way this is held down, they will bounce um, upside down. That's just how they come. And uh, as you watch these pulses move back and forth, you know, I, I mean, this is something you can just <laughs> sit and watch. <laughs> it's like lava lamp, except much more orderly. And um, what we mean by superposition principle is description of what happens as these pulses overlap. So you have this leftward moving upright pulse and you have this rightward moving upside down pulse. And you can kind of predict in a few, in a second or so, this is gonna be here and this is gonna be here. That's when they are overlapping. And as I slowly advance to that time, what you will see is that as they overlap, the kind of the shape you get in the overlapping region is the shape you would get if you imagine mathematically adding this to this. Like imagine there are functions of you know position and you just add one to the other. So, so because they are exact opposites of each other, you can find a moment where they um, kind of disappear. The string just looks flat. So within this uh, flattish appearance of the string, what you have is the leftward moving upright um, pulse that you had before, that, that, and you have rightward moving uh, upside down pulse that you had before. And if I let the time continue to run, you see those pulses reappear. So when they were overlapping, they didn't disappear. In, in fact, uh, this is uh, one remarkable thing about superposition principle, which is that what the principle really says is when two waves overlap, when two pulses are occupying the same space, it's quite different from when you have two objects that are occupying the same space. When you have two objects that are trying to occupy the same space, they can't, they collide. Waves don't do that. Waves simply overlap and they don't interact with each other. The pulse that was moving to the right just continues moving to right as if it never encountered the leftward moving pulse. Now, there's an interesting puzzle to consider, which goes with the fact that the waves carry energy. This uh, rightward moving pulse, it has some kinetic energy in the motion of the beads up and down. It has some potential energy in the um, in the stretching of the string. So there's energy here. Now, here's a natural question to ask. At the moment they overlap, what happened to that energy? So let me find the moment where they perfectly overlap with each other and cancel each other out. So the string is more or less flat and it's a perfectly valid question to ask, what happened to the energy? 
the energy that was in the pulse. I'm pausing for a little bit for you to, for especially people watching the recorded video to have time to think. And the answer here is that the energy is here and it's kind of harder to see with the simulation pause, the energy is in the form of kinetic energy. These beads are still uh, moving up and moving down. I think these are moving up and these are moving down. That's why in the very next moment, you see this moving up, this moving down. So when the simulation is paused, you don't see motion. So it's harder to see kinetic energy. But in that, even in that moment when the string was perfectly flat, there was energy still there in the motion of the bead. The energy was just in kinetic energy form. I guess nothing in the potential energy form. So. So yeah, in, and uh, with the standing wave for which you have a different set of videos, um, you kind of see the ener the buildup of the energy in the medium in the increasing um, increasing amplitude of oscillation in the uh, standing wave. So, so yeah, uh, this is a kind of easy, simple demonstration of superposition principle. And it really demonstrates a really simple principle that when two waves overlap, one, they don't do anything to each other. They don't really interact. They simply overlap and they pass through each other like the other one wasn't there. And two, the combined result of that overlapping wave is the simple sum of those two things. So, okay, so that's the illustration of the superposition principle. Um, I think 